uh, rule. Um, I, I am adamant, however, that I don't believe that people that have alternative means to get home, meaning they have a gas tank strapped to their car, should be utilizing a limited resource. So from my perspective, I can't support and I will not support a system that has hybrid vehicles charging at these stations for any period of time because there is no emergent need. It is not something that um, is, is supposed to be uh, any longer encouraging a particular use of a particular transition vehicle, which is what that is. A battery-only electric vehicle is what gets into trouble if it can't find electricity. And I think that's, um, from a policy standpoint, what we should be encouraging, but that's my personal belief. It's not the city council, it's not anybody, I'm not speaking for anybody else here. Um, I think that's the direction that, that things need to go in. That being said, the level one chargers are almost useless in that regard uh, with te technology today and technology in the future, such that I'm very hopeful that we have resources, perhaps through this program, to, to be able to install all level two and potentially level three chargers eventually um, around the city at a, that can be operated at a reasonable rate. The level ones are confusing. They're, uh, they're, there almost is no point unless you are either working here the entire day and leaving your vehicle in the garage, which is not why this network was set up. And it is certainly is not the purpose to supply electricity to a vehicle that has a gas tank um, to accommodate that. Um, that to me is doubling down on a system that is already costing us, in my opinion, a lot of money. This, this over the time frame of this system, we have expended, understandably, because we had a grant, the equivalent of several police officers, several TCOs, and a lot of staff time. And if you look at that from the perspective of the budget, where you know we have some restrictions or code enforcement officers or PEOs or PCOs, I think we, we could have spent that money in a different way absent the grant. The grant took care of that. So now we're on our own, and I think it's important to <coughs> recover that cost and provide um, a vital service to people who have electric vehicles, which, candidly, is not that many people. So uh, this is somewhat of a, a red herring to begin with, and I'll admit myself that you know, there's some self-interest here in the understanding that this may become the, um, the way that most vehicles operate, but it also may not if a barrel of oil stays where it is. So um, that's, that's my, my piece on that, and I, I thank my colleagues for, my, for indulging me. Um, is there somebody that would like to make a motion on the recommendations, and is anybody willing to heed some of what I added in there? Um. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm willing to make a motion. I, I think you're, I am in agreement with you about the hybrid cars. I think that, uh, I think the the uh, analogy to a water fountain, a drinking fountain, makes sense, and it's that, somewhat that's, for an emergency. By the way, that's Vice Chair Seidel, so yeah, so I credit was looking credit at him. Good. It's <laughs> ours now. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's ours now. So I I would move we accept the staff recommendation with the uh, addition or the change that uh, hybrid cars be uh, prohibited from using these stations. Okay. 